Toxanol was something called a corporate juggernaut, and our world still bears the marks of the massive ecological catastrophes they inflicted upon the land. The apocalypse they caused was the end of days for their world. But for us, it was simply a beginning. Look, an emergency box from the... Wow, <laughs> bet that nut makes a tight fist. Night falls like a giant around here. Tunnels like this still carry echoes from the past. Can you hear it? can make some. You're cut off from the world above. Notice board filled with the leftovers of used to be once. You're getting close to one of those old Toxanol brick towns. Pay attention. The Toxanol Corporation made this place and then just threw it away when they were done with it. Toxanol never cared about the waste as long as they didn't have to pay to clean it up. There must be a track somewhere in this brick town. Just hope it's not buried. You found the whereabouts, 
the deepest, darkest forest in the land. Sometimes hard to see under all the trees. It's a Jagni tribe outpost. Sour as hail, poor as hail. Says your followers a roughed up piece of scrap. It's a miracle it's still functioning. Love a toy, a much of peace or so. Understands completely. Let's see. Libuma Limana Uhati Oi says it's time to set the outpost free. Inflict as little damage as possible as you make your way through to the rival captain. 
If you can, you should try to convince the captain to give up the outpost and join your cause. They're ready to enter the outpost when you are. That's all, Mona. Every step you take towards your end goal will bring you closer to a better world. Here's the first line of defense. Bomb lover. Rain pipe. Spin the twirly wheel and open that drain. Everything's clocking together. Keep going. That cage is holding a helper. but weren't sure if they'd last long enough to see it. Says the tribe's been hard on them. Won't hesitate to carve out some revenge on those who hurt them.
A sharpshooter, the scaffolding looks unstable. Better stay clear of the red ray. Here's the second line of defense. Get a barrel out of it, then hit it toward the gate and blast it. That looks slow. Shoot it and watch it blow. Oh, boom. You're in. Almost there. The outpost belongs to your tribe now. He says you made them weaker, but they won't give up. Your Sifu thanks you. Your tribe is growing stronger. Says you did a great job capturing the outpost. You've earned the privilege of carrying the tribe's weapon. Figures the honor belongs to the tribe, too. Out of date says he's doing his best to keep up, but from what he can tell, it seems you're making progress with the tribe conflict. He had a feeling you'd get along with the Myriad tribe, but it remains to be seen what the future holds for your alliance. You seem to share the same values as the Myriad tribe. You both have the same optimistic outlook on life. At least, for now. But Out of Date emphasizes that solving the tribe conflict won't matter unless you help make a stand against the World Eaters. That doesn't sound good. Out of Date's forebodings are justified. The Jumbo Puff needs to be taken care of. He says the time has come to confront the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Gizmo is working on making his Mecton strong enough to 
to endure the oxygen-deprived dead zone all the way out to the World Eater. Valu alu, hero. You should get over there and see what you can do to help. Things are happening. It's not just anyone that's awake and moving. There's news of a Ronin joining the tribe. That must be you. Didn't have much else to say, so no problem. a gnote. Easy prey for Lupa Lupin. For everyone else, they're a perfect mount and easily tamed if they are kept fed. Yard. Need a key? That's more than stuck. You can't really understand your story till it's done.
the board mainly has posts from those that used to work at the chug yard back in the days gone. They don't make much sense these days. Not much more to say about the board, but Gizmo is holed up in the underyard here working on that mecton of his. The Toxanol Corporation used to run chugger chuggers out of here, big machines on rails with smokestacks that fouled the air. The rails used to be filled with chugs packed tight with two leggeds, like guppos in a tin. You're on the right track. Keep your eyes open. Tribes always scavenging for scrap, and the yard has plenty to go around. But they should have stacked the booty instead of playing around with scrap. <laughs> this actually feels refreshing. That's the good stuff. Bomber Bonkers busy ram banging the door. This is your chance. Let's see. Yes, you can do anything. The sky's the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. 
Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end. In flames. Biohazard makes your skin crawl. It's a wonder some of these up and downs still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. The spent nuclear fuel that Toxanol dumped in the surf had detrimental effects on the marine habitats, while the overflowing landfills contaminated the groundwater. Combined, this sent their world hurtling on an inevitable road to ruin. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Oh, and he says he knows you. You used to call him Gizmo. He gave you the oil-greased hands when he taught you how to upcycle. Gizmo remembers you as a nice kidling, and he can still sense the warmth of your good heart. But Gizmo says how you experience a memory can be different. You know the story, but sometimes the truth it brings is personal. He'd lie if he claimed it was all good. You changed after your Moomer and Popsy passed, and he understands why you had to leave. The old village being a constant reminder of what happened. Gizmo says he also has re-memories from the Long Gong, but unlike you, he doesn't think of the past, for it's gone. He understands history made Looper Lupin a big part of your past, your present, and soon, your future. You still believe there's some good in everyone. You still have hope for tomorrow. He says you should know that what's meant to be will always find a way, but history shouldn't consume you. Gizmo encourages that. You should forgive, but never forget. It'll provide some comfort to your soul and keep the memory of lost loved ones in your heart. Fan that flame! Wait, no! Uh, bright light blinds! It's, it's dangerous! I've got all the cold sick burns you need, Dark. Oh, do you have to insult me over this? I don't have to. But I want to! Who <laughs> go? Would like to know if you ever doubt the choices you made on the path that brought you to this point. Would you have been happier going in a different direction? Why, why, not dark? Supposes that's all any of us can do. Hard to believe the world is actually going to survive. Just seemed impossible till now. Grateful to you for coming back and doing your best to change things. You were the only chance they had. Sit up. Hello. Wonders if you liked working with the Myriad. They always seemed so centered and so seeking. They are the fruit, drink, drink, typo. Figures everyone does. They seem unusually dedicated to finding them. Worth <laughs> what? But that's not important now. Gizmo says it's taken a long time to bring the past up to the present, and where you go from here is up to you. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. He can't leave the Underyard as he has no protection against the vacuum in the dead zone. So you need to salvage scrap to upcycle the Mekton, starting with the old crate outside. 
You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no time to waste if you want to make the Mechton strong enough to fight the Jumbo Puff. Hoi, why? Not dark. Well, I value my room. It's the part of the land that suffered most from the apocalypse. It's deprived of oxygen, making it next to impossible for anything but creatures that were most contorted by the contamination. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. That's the leftover you're looking for. One likes to fall. Chill here makes you shiver a bit. That's enough to get the Mekton functional. You'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun, and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. He made a suction device so the Mekton can use the black tar as an instant refuel. You can also use it to clear oily goo puddles, so you can pass and access hard to get to areas. He's been working on another project for the Mechton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the jumbo puff. <laughs> The best way to find scripts is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. Oh. 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 
Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. Once you find Moog, he'll be able to give you directions to where you'll find Squips. Fruit, drink, drink, typo. Gizmo thinks he's a little peculiar, but very knowledgeable. He has the ins and outs of all monster and creature whereabouts. Monkey's Mechaton is built sturdy, just like himself. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? Enjoy the darkness while it lasts. Might want to hold your breath before you head any further. You're about to witness the breathtaking vistas of what's known as the Dead Zone. In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. Why add food a higher? Oh, Waxu? This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Jamaguda Horadatunka claims he goes after the most dangerous game, huge monsters. Born. Mook says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Giravabasco. Choosing what to kill and what to spare are the most important decisions you'll make. You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for others, but someone's got to do it. Otherwise, they'll do it themselves and you know they'll miss. Amanka claims he mostly kills whoever he doesn't like. Says it's wild that the world seems to be coming back, but he supposes that means more monsters for him to shoot. Wonders why you work so hard to keep things alive. Bullets help thin the herd instead. Says you should give up on working with the stubborn myriad. He keeps trying to put out their lights and they keep putting up new ones. Says they keep the monsters away. He needs them closer, not farther. But enough of that, right? He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. 
over boo boo ah he's not sure about their veggie diet anymore and if it's changed who knows what it's done with the chemical composition of their body output ikaya bazafka ti mushtak bala right now though he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters both tall and short Vaksan u in tabadan kamaglai ikaya bazafka ti thinks that it all hangs on the tree of life when it started to fail everything changed kunududua muk says you must learn to walk before you can run it takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter sigaya lama yaba fortunately for you he can help he understands you need to start off with something small before you go big Mishako here hidlo vaksa u intabadan there's no better place to start than a squip cave hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes in mo why at funu jabe says you stick to the hunting and shots present themselves later Just watch where this thing's going. Wait, it's the split hole up. The place is just filled with critters. did shot See what this thing can do Every day is a new chance to fulfill your destiny Once the volatilization from the nuclear waste evaporated A volatile gas rose through the soil and infested structures, even Toxanol's own buildings. So, in a way, they caused their own death. Yeah. 
Go knock the lid off that sludge truck. It'll fill the place up and you can get up to that entrance there. like the switches need to be turned to match so enough charge can flow through the conductors. Just a few moves left, make them count. Bristles like the hair of one electrified. Drop, unload. switches so they match. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. Fists of slice up. Scronky stomper. What a glorious ride. Playtime is over. You need to line up the switches so they match. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. Hey-ya! 
Fruit drip jig typo. He says that's enough scripts to sustain the Mecton's claw crane cannon with infinite ammunition. Well done. That's the special weapon he made to store the scripts in the Mecton. It will be strong enough to launch them at the Jumbo Puff. Gizmo's made vehicles before to confront the Jumbo Puff himself, but failed. But this time, it's different. The Mecton will be strong enough to do the job. It's time to put a stop to the World Eater now, otherwise he fears the damage it's caused to the tree already will be too much to handle. He asks you to not even think about taking on the Jumbo Puff on foot. You'll need the Mecton to do the job, take his word for it. There's time to improve the Mecton before you confront the Puff. There are more wreck boxes out in the dead zone with gear you should be able to equip the Mecton with on your own. It's already quite sturdy, but upgrading it will greatly improve your chances of victory. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Untended. The world will go under with time. Guess you'll find out how vicious the Porky Puff is when you face it eye to eyes. Says you should take care. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Says you should take it easy. Fire even start here?
Loot. These steel legs were made for walking. Remember, any wreck you can crawl away from is a good one. There's a place and time for everything, but for that city scenario, it's already come and gone. behind you. Shelter 7B is still there, open and ready to shelter.
Some places a Mekdong just can't go. Easy to lose your way if you can't see landmarks. Stompers. Let's see. darkest between the stars. Brick bracks like this were symbols for the growth of the old world.
kill. This is an epic already. How it ends is up to you. That muscle sque Go grab the bar and start squeezing those muscles. You snap that off? Feeling pumped up. can spy the edge of a new day.
was another shot for me. They just couldn't get enough of these bricks back in the day's box. There's a change in the air. Feels like daybreak. Hope you grabbed a big breath. Here shelter 7C2, and it's not far from where 7C is.
stories only survive if someone is listening, so pay attention. Good in that. It's another old world brick brack. Night is creeping in. Here is Knack Hill, the patch that Pebble calls home. Seems wild that you made it all the way up here to wherever he happens to be. He's not quite sure about that himself, having gotten here accidentally. Says he's not quite sure. He just wanted to climb, but now he seems to be stuck. He's bowled over by how you managed to find him. Someone who could do that could go just about anywhere. You seem solid, hard to crack, and always climbing higher. What could stop someone like that? Wherever you're heading next, he hopes you keep strong and tough. You'll need it to get through all the horrors of the world that lie ahead, no matter which direction you go. Wants to know what you'd do if you made a mistake while trying to get someplace. Would you head back down and try again? Or would you try to continue on from where you were? <laughs> thinks he might just stay here forever instead. Classic! <laughs> Says he's not sure he's happy about the world surviving. Means he's stuck here longer. <laughs> Wonders why you tried to save the world. In the end, what's the difference? <laughs> Curious about you working with the Myriad. Don't all those lights they use hurt your eyes? Oh, Pretty blinding, he supposes. Repeat, Let's talk about happier things.
Je kan dat dan pas dat kan ik. Zo'n toer, papa. He says it's rare, but sometimes he gets caught between a rock and a hard place. There's no worse spot to be in, and this time is no exception. Come on, Samuel. To the Juan de Cancampa. Why, Raka? He's always felt insignificant, like a pebble to a mountain. That's why he's climbing now. He wants to feel on top of the lowlands for once. Kai Pekant. He realizes that one who doesn't climb can't fall either, so in a way, he guesses he's safer here, not going anywhere. Why, Raka? Oh, Raka Chantatam. Figures he can't get out of here on his own. He's tried. Kai Pekant. Hebel's risking death by staying or leaving, so he won't stop trying until he's able to climb out of this dying world. <laughs> he figures he just has to be more careful. Also, it would be better if he knew where to climb. Repeat and funds. Nasupale kinka. He doesn't want to be a pebble in your shoe, but if you'd help find some better spots for him to climb, he'd be really grateful. Thanks you for not just walking all over him when he's down. Light instantly banishes dark. How much light do you really need? All the light, all of it! Uh, I mean, you could leave a little space for the dark. All the light. <laughs> Something could be under any rock. 